All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the best knives to get heading into 2023. And of course, this is just my subjective list. You can feel free to disagree. So let's jump right into it with the Hinder XM18. Now, whether you get the three inch or the three and a half inch, this just happens to be the three inch. I think that this is one of the best knives for all around versatility. And what I mean by this is uh, Hinder or XM18s are one of the few blades out there that you can customize just about every darn thing. If you want different blade steels, they have everything ranging from O1 tool steels, CPM 3V, uh, S35 VN, S45 VN. Um, they have literally tons of steels available. Not to mention, they also have many, many different types of blade shapes, including recurves. This is the, their Spanto. They have um, recurved Tanto tips, Tanto tips, buoys, literally you name it. There's probably a blade shape and steel they make it in. Not to mention too, you can get the handle scales in G10 like this, or you can get them in wood, titanium, just about anything you want. So for versatility, I have to say that the hinderer, whether it's the XM18 three and a half or three inch are super hard to go wrong with. And once and honestly, they are just super, super versatile. They're not cheap, I will say, but if you are looking for a knife that is surely the most versatile blade out there, probably Hinder's XM18 is very hard to beat. All right, next one up is going to be my top value option for the new year. Now, this value option is always subject to change and it is super hard to find truly the knife that adds the most value. And I didn't want to throw a knife on here just because it's in my collection already, but I genuinely think that the Kershaw Emerson CQC6 in D2 tool steel, this guy here, is probably one of the best values. And it's primarily because even knives like the Civivi Elementum in D2 or other knives like the Spyderco Tenacious um, in HCR 13 MOV still come in at a higher price than this guy. This is a blade that you can regularly find um, under $40 and it lives I think normally at about $45. So for D2 tool steel it is made in China so do bear that in mind but it is a really hard knife to beat for its value. Like I said the D2 tool steel is really solid on this guy and the ergonomics are squared away and the cool thing about it is it does of course have Emerson's wave feature so if you practice with it this thing can be faster than a flipper or even an automatic knife. If it literally opens as you pull it out of your pocket. So pretty nifty. Um, I just genuinely think when I was looking at all the knives that I personally know about that, you know, have offer a decent amount of value, this one is super hard to beat. Um, I will say about the only thing I genuinely dislike about this knife is the fact that it is a steel frame lock. So it is noticeably heavier than you might anticipate. I believe it's around five, five and a half ounces. So it is heavy, but once again, I do think the steel, the design, the ergos are worth it. All right, next one up is the best timeless knife. And I think that the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 is a very, very timeless knife. Now, honestly, I think that this blade gives the Hinder a really good run for its money because this is probably one of the only knife options out there that is offered in more steel variants. Now, granted, you won't see O1 tool steel, but there are practically nameless amounts of steels that um, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 is made in. And once again, the aftermarket for handles is nigh on endless. Now, the reason why I said that this is timeless is the fact that these blades just look good, feel good, and offer, I think, a pretty decent value most of the time. There are some overhyped collector versions and variants of this blade and different like Tanto versions of this knife I think are a little bit overpriced. But as far as the blade goes, they do offer a great deal of value and versatility. And overall, it's just a very timeless knife, I think, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So the next one is going to be my best kind of slept on knife, if you will. And that is the Emerson Minicom. Now, I'm personally a fan of recurved blades, as 
So I'm personally a fan of recurve blades, so I'm a little bit more biased to the Minicom, but realistically, I think just about any Emerson out there is a pretty darn good knife and is very overlooked slash slept on. And if you are a knife person, you're in the knife community, these are not always the cheapest blades to get into. And you do have to remember that these are just made out of 154 CM. So buyers beware if you don't want to pay, you know, premium for older materials or styling, there is that disadvantage. But sometimes like this one, you can get them the older versions used like this guy for a pretty good price. And once again, if you're in the knife community, especially if you have newer knife community friends, they are going to be like, what the heck is that? Because Emerson's are definitely not as popular as they used to be, but they are still cult cool and have a cult following on them for sure. Once again, too similar to the Kershaw Emerson. This guy also has the Wave. And one thing I will say about the Minicom, if you like using your Wave feature, the Minicom is one of the better selections to go for because of how this blade is uh, shaped. It makes the Wave really protrude. So when it's in its closed position, you'll see like this versus this. Um, it is not super noticeable and the CQC6 is not bad by any means, but you will notice that this wave is protruding like further away from the handle scales um, than other models. But anyways, the Minicom is really cool, very much a slept on blade. So if you're wanting that blade that's going to impress your knife friends, this is a really hard option to beat. All right, my last kind of, um, the last one up is, in my opinion, the best value retention. And I want to say, if you're getting if you're getting knives for a type of collector standpoint, do be careful. Knives are a lot like watches. You know, there's a lot of social background to it. So different makers go through different kind of hype phases, where some are worth you know more than others at certain times. But I think genuinely, Chris Reeve knives, especially the Encosi and Sabenzas are just overall knives that hold their value super, super well, even if they're used, even if they're modded, um, so long as it's tasteful modifications and you haven't done anything too wild, uh, Chris Reeve knives just hold on to their value so well. And it's because they're built like absolute bank vaults. They have no play. Um, th there's incredible tolerances, especially on their newer Encosis. Like the tolerances for these blades are super, super tight. I mean, they are put together very well. So these guys hold on to their value super well, especially if you can get something like an S45 VN version, because now that they've shifted off of the S45 VN, this is like a uh, more limited edition blade steel because this was what they originally upgraded from S4 or S35 to S45, and now they're transitioning to Magna Cut, which I think is a step in the right direction, but it just so happens to mean that there is only a certain amount of Incosis, Sabenzas, and different knives that they're making that were made out of S45 VN. So if you have one of these, it's probably not going to immediately appreciate, but I would not be surprised in the near future if these S45 options kind of take on a cult-like full following that people want. And I would be surprised if these did not appreciate. So anyways, that is the best um, value retention knife, in my opinion that is out there. Chris Reeves, Sabenzas, and Incosis, especially, like I said, the like Micarta inlays and the large sized versions of these, I think are going to hold their value the best. So anyways, that's technically just my perspective. Um, that's what I've seen in the market. I could be wrong on it, but uh, I don't think I am. So, so but I don't think I will be. So it is a little bit of a perspective, but yeah, so heavy value retention. Anyways, guys, that is my kind of five knives uh, going into 2023. If you are interested in a knife for those specific reasons, I think that these are some of the best blades in their category that at least I know of. And of course, as you guys are well already able to do, let me know in the comment section below if you think that there's a better knife for any of these selections or if you think that there are knives that are better to grab going into 2023. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.